Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science Radio Technology. In today's show, Rocket Monday, we're gonna talk about the granddaddy rocket, the Saturn V. So let's dive right into it. Well, what we are talking about is not just a rocket, it's completely different ball game. This is in terms of scale, in terms of its capability, in terms of its size, in terms of when it was built, it's on a different level. I cannot even comprehend the one percent of it. They're like you can watch hundred hour documentaries of this and still barely scratch the surface. It's on a different level. To give you a, just a starter context of that, uh, Von Braun Brown is a creator of this. Now, why is that important? Well, think of it this way: that same dude is responsible for making V2 rocket. Yes, the world's first ICBM. Not ICBM would be pushing it, but BM it was, ballistic missile it was. So you can understand after the defeat of uh, basically Germany and uh, the scientists were captured by Soviet Union and America and Von Braun chose America and some other scientists chose Soviet Union. So Von Braun, like uh, once Sputnik was actually launched and they successfully operated it and America did try to launch another satellite and it failed, uh, Von Braun got a team and it's like, bro, here's the unlimited money, do it. That's it. Just do it. Put, uh, you know, put uh, basically put us uh, USA in the level to compete against USSR. So they made this rocket and the end game was to send the man on the moon now why moon because of this precedent now this precedent is like people may say like because we are soviet union and that's the reason why that happened that's absolutely true that's the reason why funding was done but in terms of people's uh, enthusiasm people's like people's support this precedent is directly important or jf kennedy is directly responsible for that people support not in terms of finance because war time money starts to flow like there is no issue but in terms of public support he was very integral and his uh, speech like we're gonna put a man on the moon before this decade is out that's moving to the whole nation that was not just like okay eh, let's try to see whether we can do it no that's like we have to do it and we have a timeline and his speech is on a different level on a different level whoever wrote it or something like that is like it's on a different level it's like uh, like we we cannot be just like you know uh, play up we have be a part of spaces we have to lead it like that kind of commitment that's like dude we are that powerful that we can lead this it's on a different level that's why i said like saturn 5 is on a mythical level because things did not exist at that time uh, rocket staging what is that like they barely tried uh, staging uh, earlier before this and most of them failed so nothing was known no instruction manual no guidance just do it so this is a completely different ball game so they came up with three stage rocket why three stage well modern rockets are two stage simply because our engines are much more efficient and we really don't send something this heavy to give you a context of that the biggest heavy thing we have is a uh, international space station uh, now here's the thing this puppy can uh, put 150 tons into low earth orbit in one go the entirety of space station uh, basically the heaviest part is less than 20 ton so this puppy could have launched uh, the whole iss instead of decades and it's like yeah few launches done go home done like it was on a different level and uh, the first stage how big what is basically it was 45 meter to give you a context other there are many current active useful rockets that are smaller than that 45 meter that was just the stage one and to make sure th that rocket actually gets off the ground they built the like on a guat tier engine known as uh, f1 engines now this f1 engines runs on liquid oxygen plus rp1 aka kerosene now you may be like why kerosene one simple reason at this first stage your rocket needs thrust more than anything else because inertia is fighting you're not gonna be like you know phew, that's not gonna happen you have to accelerate slowly simply because you can't accelerate fast because your weight is too high so they chose thrust in this model and kerosene gives ample amount of thrust so they built it and this uh, rocket engine was open cycle so they have a turbine and it's just a jet in the exhaust to make sure they can make the skirt of the rocket engine as big as possible they had the exhaust of that rocket acting as an air curtain basically this hot exhaust which was only like you know for 700 to 800 degrees celsius was acting as a buffer layer between the chamber walls that hot exhaust and then really hot exhaust of three almost 2000 degrees celsius so that's how they got the main engine to work and it was on a different level the engineering done on this is on a different level can we be better in, than this yes absolutely can we build something this big uh, nobody is even trying let that sink in nobody is even attempting to build one in engine that has this much power right now the whole modern world has shifted into making smaller more efficient engine like a uh, uh, raptor engine 
So this was like one of a kind and it will always remain that. Now this was just the first stage. So what about second and third stage? Now second stage was 40, uh, 24.9 meter, almost 25 meter, 25 meter. That's the size of a building. That was the second stage. So and uh, third stage on top of that was 17.8 uh, meter. So it's a huge rocket. To give you a context of people generally say who have actually had the luxury of actually seeing it in real life. They say it's like Statue of Liberty just stood up and flew. That's how tall this rocket was. Now, to achieve high mileage, because again, you have to go to the moon, you're not just going for low Earth orbit, you have to go to the moon. So that means you need very high velocity. To achieve very high velocity, you have to run your engine for longer time. To achieve very high long term, you need higher specific impulse, aka J2 engine. Now, this engine is different from this engine simply because this uses liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Benefit of that? clean exhaust and clean exhaust is not in terms of like uh, clean for the environment clean is in terms of the um, basic particulates that's coming out of it it's very high velocity it gives you very high speed and which was needed for trans uh, lunar burns so these are the three main components basically two engine types three stages and that's it like that was the rocket part after that there was another lunar module and all that so how the heck they accomplished staging now this is very early on and if you have seen uh, basically spacex development you must have seen there was a stage uh, with falcon one where they destaged it and it ended up smacking the uh, upper stage that happens in a rocket so how the heck they made sure this does not happen with this giant things answer lot of explosive boards simple reason was because the rocket was so huge and the first stage was so violent and powerful that if they use something you know suboptimal it might just shake itself apart so they had to use something solid strong and concrete they had to count on it that the rocket will not fall apart on its own the vibrations are very serious on this so lot of uh, boards and to make sure the separation is a clean event basically these two things as far apart as they can be and then the engines fire up to make sure that they have a quote unquote clean they used another rockets lot of them not one not to multiple of them so these are what we call auxiliary rockets so they were a rocket put into the previous stage basically all, all stages could have two all of them these are the retro rockets that were used in stage one basically stage first stage the whole job of this the moment explosive bolts will detonate this will fire and this will start to pull the up, uh, basically stage one apart from stage two and to make sure that stage two a it can ignite reliably so it has to make sure that all the fuel is going into the engine at this time pressurization was not as reliable so how the heck they did it they they utilize these tiny rockets these rocket pushed the second stage apart so first stage is being pulled apart second stage is being pushed apart and that way then you will see the engine ignite and there is amazing footage of this uh, why we have amazing footage of this because there is skirt uh, back then they did not have skirt how the skirt is integrated in uh, basically falcon 9 the skirts fall uh, falls off as a complete unit so you only have two things here there were three things stage two stage one and a skirt to make sure that skirt uh, detaches very quickly cleanly they had to put camera on that and uh, the camera was designed in such a way that it can survive re-entry and they will fish it out from the ocean and that's why we have such amazing footage of actual separation events so uh, you can easily see that the first boards detached that rocket will pull apart then this uh, second interstage will fall apart and interstage has very tiny clearance aka they had like a feet of clearance so if they uh, bunk up even a little bit they will destroy the engine so it was very tricky once all of that is done once these boosters are almost empty that means the fuel has been pushed uh, to the engine then they will turn on the engine and engine will come uh, give clean thrust so that's how they achieved clean separation back then right now it's not no longer as difficult as it used to be but this is what they had to do basically they had to have a smaller rocket to move the bigger rockets and this is how they got the stable fuel and clean brakes for separation and they had to do it multiple times and i would urge you to watch the video of staging that i have given down and you can easily see these three tiny rockets are pushing uh, pulling things apart and then the main engine fires it's amazing on a different level so that was just for staging now we come to how the heck they guided this kind of thing uh, because you have to uh, the f uh, center engine in the uh, base 5 is a uh, non gimbal basically it's constant but the four outer engines they have gimbal so how the heck they are moving along you have computer control computers did not exist the way that we know about computers it's like computer right now is a normal thing. hey computer by that like which architecture you want x86 arm architecture risk 5 architecture you go you own it it's like known we know how this was back in 1969 there was no such thing and 69 was the launch year they had to figure out these things before like five six years before uh, reality was they had to make computer what we call computer today is been laid by some people who use this computer as a foundation so it's on a different level and to give you a context of it what kind of computer memory we are talking about this is the memory these are metal beads uh, like almost a donut and these get magnetized in terms of uh, uh, clockwise or counterclockwise clockwise it's a zero counterclockwise is a basically one 
and this grid is uh, what is used to magnetize it now here's the problem with this this works again this has been the foundation of the whole apollo system but it's a read once basically the moment you read it you destroy the magnetic field so you have to have another sense line that's why you'll see two grids basically one x grid one uh, plus grid uh, the another one is just to rewrite the data so it's like computer will be like hey i read zero from this the another system will make sure there is zero on that again basically that's how they had to do that uh, what about microprocessors there was no such thing so they built it they built the first ICs that we call modern ICs basically they laid the foundation of that also so in terms of uh, things that came out of just of the Saturn V it's on a different level it's it's completely different they had to make ICB and the main contractor was IBM and that's why you will always see IBM is specified as like you know the big company that got uh, you know man to the moon because IBM made the basically main control unit the big red band that you see and the line instructives got a way to actually see it and provide the video down below but you can actually see the scope of the computation power they had to do with basically digital computer was very reliable in terms of calculation but it was very slow analog computer was a uh, bodgy but it was very fast and reliable so analog computer will control the engine but the what engine supposed to do they will like it will be like a digital computer it's like bro go left then the main engine command will be given by the analog computer these two were working together that's how hard it was for them but they did it like they, they did it so it was on a different level and it was hand sewn like hand sewn like women actually use needle and copper wires to actually sewn this damn wire memory system now you have to understand this uh, whole uh, why I'm saying that is the most amazing thing about humanity is because when this uh, basically speech was done, people supported it. But that president what got assassinated, that instead of crippling uh, NASA, it turbocharged it. Like the whole nation got it together. It's like, bro, we have to complete this dream. Like we have to do it. This, this is absolute. We have to do it. After that, another tragedy happened where uh, basically crew of Apollo uh, 1, basically the first group that was selected, they caught fire in the capsule and they died instantaneously like because the uh, module was designed in such a way that if something bad happens the door will not open up because again it's in vacuum it's supposed to be in vacuum so uh, the, the design was chosen for that reason it's not a fault it was chosen that way so no matter what happens the door will not open up accidentally or by a uh, boom kind of scenario problem was that made it impossible to open when fire happened and pure oxygen uh, com confined spaces that was bad. However, even that did not slow NASA down. That was like, okay, we have to be much more serious and people have to realize this. We could lose people. Like we could actually lose people. And that came very close in Apollo 13. Uh, I would urge you to watch that movie. It was quite, quite good, like quite good. So uh, NASA kind of realized that a loss of life can actually happen. So they took very serious precautions in order to make sure that never happens because of the rocket. So they, uh, they built launch escape system. This was missing in uh, basically space shuttle and space shuttle has like two failed mission which total costed around 14 astronauts. So you can understand that like they were very serious back then and uh, this system was tested. Now here's the interesting part. They put a basically made a dummy second stage and put it uh, on top of it and launched it. Everything was going according but rocket randomly disintegrated. So this testing was as accurate as thoroughly real as it can be like uh, instead of like going and then it's going to detaching. No, it actually disintegrated. So it was absolutely reliable test and they knew that for a uh, guaranteed fact that this will uh, pull the astronauts away and because of the a launch platform location the algorithm was set in such a way that they will fall uh, towards the ocean side and the capsule was designed so it can do safe landing on its own so everything like if something bad happens the tower will just pull uh, pull the damn thing apart and it can do faster than explosion now one thing you have to know a rocket while it does have a lot of boom power it does not have kaboom power what does that mean that simply means explosive while does not have too much energy it can dump that energy very quickly it's like i have one megawatt of energy instead of giving it over a second it dumps it in like you know one microsecond that's the main point why explosives are so powerful when you are talking about rocket it does have fuel it does have energy like if you calculate in megajoules it has like low amounts of energy but because of it has to mix and then it is integrated and not to mention the fact that it it will go boom it will push the fuel apart it has a lot of fireball effect a lot of shockwave but does not have the speed the intensity so this why uh, the system can actually work basically it can pull things apart without killing the astronauts so it was not as uh, brutal as you might think but consequence was the windows were covered for to make sure the rocket can fire without destroying the window and you will see that in any movie that you'll see like they will reach into space then the tower is jettisoned then the window opens up because of this 
So it was quite amazing and they never needed to use it. The Saturn V as a rocket was surprisingly reliable. The issue in, even in Apollo 13 happened in the lunar module, basically uh, the module that actually went to the moon side, not in the rocket. Basically as a launcher, uh, Saturn V is like absolute record, like not even a single failure. And that uh, you also have to understand they had an issue where they had lightning fall on the rocket and it was still like, I got this bro, I got this. So it was on a different level. I would urge you to please watch the damn link videos I'm linking down there because it's on a different scale. I cannot truly really appreciate uh, the mag majesty of this basically. So this was my presentation, tiny presentation on a huge project. I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends, that will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I'd urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me excess content, and please leave a comment because I try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free, and as always, thanks for watching.